No, that's not it. Fix my hair. Good girl. What's up everybody, I'm your host Decaf and welcome back to our channel. And yes, I say our channel because it's not just about me, it's about all of us and what we can continue to do for all of our black, queer, trans and non-binary family to make sure that they feel welcome, seen and supported in what they do. And of course, it's not just for me to know and it's not just for you to know, but for everybody to know. So if you hear this message, make sure you internalize it and make sure you share it with everybody else. So let's talk, let's listen. Let's love. And you know we back with some housekeeping rules because sometimes y'all just don't be listening. And if I'm talking to you, you know I'm talking to you. But if not, then you good in my book. But for those that don't know, make sure to like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe so that you can get all of the episodes each time that they drop so that I can know what's good. Like, you got something that you wanna share? Make sure to send it in the comments. You got something that you want us to promote? Make sure you send it in the comments. You may wanna pop up on a little phone call or something and talk about some of these. Make sure you send it in the comments. Do what you need to do, but we are across all platforms, Medium, YouTube, Anchor, Spotify, Apple. So make sure to subscribe to all of those. All right, now before we get started, I just want to do a little check-in with you just to see how things are going, see how you're going, see if you've shown yourself some love lately or see if you've shown somebody else some love. Have you? Well, if you haven't shown yourself some and I hope that you have, it's okay because we're going to do that right here, right now. We are going to take our five seconds of deep breathing just to recollect ourselves, it gives ourselves a moment to relax, to get some peace, you know, if you haven't had it today, you're getting it now. So do it with me. In five. Up next, we have the song of the show where I try to put y'all on to some real cute music by a black queer artist, old or new. If you haven't heard it before, then you heard it here first. So today's song of the show was Ass Like That by Victoria Monet. If you haven't heard of Victoria Monet, then you're probably missing out because the girl's good. The album Jaguar has been in rotation since it came out because that's where this song is from, that album. So if you haven't heard it, go check it out. She is a pop and R&B singer and songwriter that was born in Georgia, but raised in Sacramento, California. One of the more popular topics of people that she's written for involves Ariana Grande, Lupe Fiasco, and Janelle Monet. So not only does she write these incredible songs for herself, she also writes them for other great and talented artists and also her best friend. She was also the opening act for Fifth Harmony. And remember, if you want to hear more of this song, make sure to subscribe to the Closet Unlocked newsletter so you can get exclusive access to the playlist that this is on. For today's feature story, whoever you are, wherever you are, I send you my love. Justice. You deserve love. Let's sit with that for a moment. Per usual, Karamo from Queer Eyes Fab Five leaves one of their heroes, Nate McIntyre, which is from season five, episode 10, if anybody want to go peep it, with these heartfelt words. In a world centered on finding love and ways to give it, there are still people out there who believe they don't deserve it. And even when it shows up right in front of them, it is still as if it is camouflaged by despair. For those of us that have survived the trenches of dating in the closet, this can seem like the honest truth. Blinded by judgment and confusion, we are taught to ignore the part of us that makes us whole. Pressured by the peers of our surroundings, we are expected to find attraction within limitations. Extending our boundaries for those who do not deserve our love, we forget to give ourselves that same grace. Now, let's be honest, dating in general is hard. No matter if you are straight, gay, bi, pan, or however else you choose to identify, finding someone that shows you that you deserve love can be the hardest part. 
Now imagine going through all of the emotions and emotions of dating only for it to end while not being able to share it with anyone. Harboring the secrets of your bed and the heartbreak in your soul. Shielding yourself from the impact of ridicule and shame from those who claim to love you. Like others, I was living in a constant state of anxiety. Worried that one day I too could be exposed for all that I am, risking my chances of ever finding love. Afraid that simply being me wasn't enough to experience genuine pleasure and affection. That was until the day that I had to ask myself the important question. What do you do when your chances of love run out? Surprisingly, I didn't have an answer for that one. As if dating as a black queer guy gave me the privilege of expecting that I would be afforded so many chances. So I did what many of us tend to do. I did the best with the love that I was given, even if sometimes it came barring a price. At times, love felt good. At times, it got worse. At times, it wasn't even about the love at all, but about the potential that came along with it. Worried about not being out and for being in the closet, I gave up on any potential chances of love. Forgetting to extend me some grace, I took the love I was given with a grain of salt. I spent so much time trying to create a version of myself that everyone could love that I didn't even take the time to realize what that looked like for me. Out of all of the entanglements that I have been in, there was one that just really, really bothered me. When I had first met this guy, I didn't know what to expect. It started as your typical millennial hookup. We liked a few photos on Instagram, linked up in person, and then we continued to spend time together. Even though I was only 18, it didn't take long for me to realize that he was crazy. About a month or so into us talking or dating or whatever else the kids call it nowadays, this man began showing his true colors. Then over the course of the next few months, I began to see what those colors meant for me. They meant that I needed to get out of this situation ship ASAP. Over time, he had become overly controlling, demanding, possessive, and in some cases, more physical. I had never had this much freedom to date before and sure as hell wasn't prepared for all that this man came with. I'm just glad that I realized what was happening before it was too late. Him randomly popping up on me at all times. Okay, I could deal with that. His need to always know what I was doing and where I was at. Yeah, I had to get used to that. His interjection with the business and activities that I had with my friends. I did not need that. Him holding me hostage and refusing to take me home, I did not like that. Him physically putting his hands on me multiple times, I did not fuck with that. That was all it took for me to realize that this was not the love I deserve. I knew that there were people out there who didn't camouflage their love for me. I just had to embrace my surroundings to find it. In an article written for BBC, the author discusses the double closet phenomenon. This happens when queer victims of abuse are reluctant to report these incidents because they are afraid of being outed to the public. Whether it is by force or choice, coming out can be a very intimate moment and not having to do so under such extreme conditions is more ideal, especially in terms of dating. Was I afraid to cut him off? No. Was I afraid to tell others? Yes. However, it was because of those closet moments that have brought me closer to the grace and love that I deserve. If it was not for him overextending himself into my life and relationships, I probably would not have come out about my sexuality to some of my closest friends that soon. If it was not for them allowing me the space to confide my secrets and heartbreak, I would not have known that I had more chances to find love. If it was not for the strength needed to get myself out of a foul situation, I would not have found the courage to live as liberal in my truth as I am today. Even though this somewhat worked for me, the only healthy way for a queer person to come out is to allow them to do it on their own terms. Regardless of how any other people feel they should live their life, that choice is theirs. Not their family members, not their friends, and not their partners. If you are in a queer relationship with someone who may still be or are finding ways to survive in the closet yourself, then there needs to be a conversation had around what the collective boundaries are, such as topics suggested by the book Love is Respect. You never know what someone may be going through or what their needs are at that moment. When it comes to making life-changing decisions, the only person that is able to make them for them is them. They do not owe anyone else the opportunity to tell their story for them. It is not your luck to bet on. So to those still searching for their chances, understand that you still deserve love. You deserve to be extended grace to figure yourself out. You deserve to not be judged or pressured into living a life that was not designed for you. 
You deserve to find strength in the relationships that embrace you. You deserve to cut someone off that harms you and not feel bad about telling a story about it. Those stories always matter. Your story matters. Now that one probably should have came with a slight trigger warning, but it was needed. It was needed to be said. It was needed for the conversation to be started because again, these are experience and moments that a lot of people may experience that we just don't talk about enough. So if you would like to share your story, you can send in your anonymous submission to our survey found in the description as well as across all of our platforms. For those that have submitted, thank you for your honesty. Thank you for your transparency. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for showing others the strength that comes with these journeys so that they know that they are not alone in theirs. Thank you for being you. And thank you for being here. Because here, your story matters.